So welcome to RCC short notes. This is the class number three in the basics of limit state method. Okay, that we are going to see. In this, I have segregated this limit state method as here around. Limit state method. The limit state method that I have segregated into the first one is design strength of material design strength of material and the second one is characteristics characteristics loads next one is that is important points about that in short LSM and the next one is assumptions on assumptions on limit state method and the fifth one is analysis of stress block of steel and concrete okay and the sixth one is analysis of limit state method so in that way i have segregated for our better understanding the first one is we are going to see what is a design strength of material the first one is design strength of material okay what is the meaning the design strength of material okay so design strength of material mean yes strength of material yes strength of material here the steel and concrete yes strength of material which is considered for for which is considered for design purpose of a structure of a structure is called design strength that means yeah material that design is structure for example for concrete for concrete for concrete fck fck is the the ultimate strength of concrete okay so this is the ultimate strength of concrete i can write fck is the ultimate characteristic compressive compressive strength under uniaxial compression under uniaxial compression in lab okay which was tested in lab Yes, that is FCK. So FCK is the characteristic compressive strength of concrete after 28 days of curing, which was tested in a cube 
in the lab. Now, we already seen this, this FCK, we already seen this in the concrete technology, this FCK further reduced into FCK divided by a reduction factor in order to consider the size effect and the load effect. Okay, so this FCK, FCK uh, reduced by considering by considering shape and load effect loading effect here the shape means maybe we will use this for a beam or a column or a slab whatever maybe and loading effect means the loads are flexural load or torsion load or compressive load so on and so forth okay this also on the lab the test which is happening on the lab the beam which is tested on the lab now further this fck this value further reduced into fck divided by 1.5 for this one and this is the partial factor of safety actually this is not a partial factor of safety this is the reduction factor reduction factor which is used for considering the shape and load effect but this is the partial factor of safety so now this becomes as 0 0.45 fck okay so this is the design strength design strength of concrete in field for all kind of elements so this is the important point okay now for steel second one is for steel for steel fy fy is the yield strength yield strength of steel this was in lab the tested in the lab now fy divided by 1.15 that is the design strength design strength of steel in field okay say so why here we are not considering the shape and load effect in the lab also the steel is subjected to axial tension okay and uh, the shape is is a circular shape in the field also is the same kind of material we are, that is same kind of steel we are using of having circular in shape okay and is subjected to only tension force steel we, we, are, we are using only for the tension therefore uh, we don't want to consider the size and safe effect okay so this is approximately this is we can say is a partial factor of safety okay so in nutshell we can say eventually we can say 0 0.45 fck is the design strength for concrete what is your fy divided by 1.15 this is 0 0.87 FY is the design strength of design strength of design strength for steel. Okay. Now this is the summary, very, very important. The examination aspirants, the state government examination aspirants can have to contribute only the summary part. Then partial factor of safety 
for concrete is 1.5 for steel 1.15 so this is the important factor very very important as per your gate examination as well as all state government examinations okay now see we can write here note put note and write why why the factor of safety of concrete is more as compared to steel what is the reason so we can write partial factor of safety with it material is considered is considered on the account of on the account of variations in variations in quality control so this word is important quality control this is also a examination question why the factor safety of concrete is more as compared to steel the reason is the quality control the steel is made it with a higher quality than the concrete making the concrete is made with a poor quality control than the steel okay so the steel quality control is superior than the concrete quality control that's why we are using more factor safety for lesser quality than the more quality of steel okay now this is the first point and the second point is the first point and the second point under this is here steel quality control is more than concrete quality control okay now next point important ultimate strength of concrete is taken is taken as characteristics compressive strength while yield strength of steel is taken as characteristics strength okay see ultimate strength of concrete is taken as a characteristic strength but in the steel we are considering the yield strength as a characteristic strength why why we are taking ultimate strength in the concrete and the yield strength in the steel as a characteristic strength respectively the reason is why because 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 ultimate strength of because to achieve to achieve ultimate strength of steel yes a required high strength which is not possible 
which is not possible in civil engineering in civil engineering structure which is not possible in civil engineering structure okay to achieve the ultimate strength of the steel we need a high strain but this high strain is not possible in the civil structure the civil structure is a more structure so that is very difficult to attain the ultimate strain in the steel because to attain the ultimate strain we need ultimate uh, ultimate stress we need a high strain okay so that is very difficult in the civil structure for example see for example in a concrete in concrete in steel in steel in concrete and steel see in concrete the ultimate strength of concrete which was attained by a strain of we already seen this in the concrete technology so this is the ultimate strength okay this is the ultimate strength at what strain 0 0.002 all grade of concrete reaches its ultimate strength for a strain of 0 0.002 and corresponding to what is ultimate strength after considering this safe and load effect we will have 0 0.67 fck okay how we are getting fck divided by 1.15 sorry 1.5 1 1.5 1 is equal to 0 0.67 fck okay this is the actual strength but in the steel in the steel for reaching this ultimate strain is very difficult okay the strain corresponding to ultimate stress is very difficult okay so see this is the graph of hsd bar we will consider the yield stress as a proof stress by offsetting okay by using the offset techniques somewhere here we will consider f y yield stress but the ultimate strain is somewhere here okay the strain corresponding to the ultimate stress is this one so to achieve this strain is 0 0.1 it is 0 0.1 it is a very high strain the strain corresponding to the ultimate stress is the strain corresponding to the ultimate stress is very huge very huge so that is somewhat difficult to achieve this is the ultimate stress f u so that is very difficult to achieve so it we will get at a strain of 0 0.1 this is a very high very high strain it's very difficult to achieve so in a concrete the ultimate stress we will get for a strain of 0 0.002 so that is easily achievable but in the steel the ultimate strength is getting for a very high strain but it is very difficult to achieve that's why we are using a yield stress so it is very difficult to achieve that's why we are using the yield stress corresponding a limited strength for this strength okay then what is this strength we will see this okay so that we are designing 0 0.002 plus 0 0.875 divided by yes that we will see okay so this is about the design strength of material okay the next one is we are going to see characteristics load that is second topic characteristics load what is the characteristics load now we are going to see it means it means the value of load which has 
95 percentage of it has 95 percentage probability probability of not be exceeded not be exceeded during life of structure during life of structure what is the characteristics load it means that the load the probability of load which has 95 percentage of not being exceeded during the life of the structure for example the lifespan of the structure is for example the lifespan of the structure is 100 years 100 years okay this is the 100 years life is the n year okay now we design a design load for this particular structure the load which we are designing is for example 100 kilo newton okay so the meaning is for a 95 years 95 years only this 100 kilo newton load is acting on the structure or less than this 100 kilo newton will be act so including wind load earthquake load so on so forth only five percentage of time only five percentage that means five years okay only five years the structure is subjected to the load greater than greater than 100 kilometer so that is the meaning okay so based on that we can write characteristics load Design load is equal to characteristics load load into partial factor of safety. Now, what is a partial factor safety for load that we are going to see? Very, very important partial factor of safety for loads so this they will ask you in the examination okay so be careful very very important this is a load combination load combination then limit state of limit state of collapse then limit state of serviceability limit state of serviceability okay now limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability Okay. The first one, the load combination is First, we can take dead load. Second, we can take live load. Next, we can take wind load or earthquake load. Any one of them you have to take. This is the live load. This is the dead load. In the similar manner, here also we can take this is the dead load. This is the live load. Now we can take this is the wind load or earthquake load for limit state of serviceability and first combination is dead load plus live load combination and the second one is dead load plus 
wind load or earthquake load combination third one is dead load plus live load plus wind load or earthquake load combination so we are going to see one by one okay in the state government examination you can expect a question from this factor of safety itself okay the first one for dead load live load combination 1.5 1.5 but at the same time the limit state of collapse we will take 1 1 for dead load plus wind load or earthquake load any one of them only we will take okay that is for limit state of collapse we will take 1.5 or 0 0.9 okay or 0 0.9 then the wind load or earthquake load 1.5 in a similar manner limit state of serviceability 1 1 dead load earthquake load wind load so this is 1.2 entire 1.2 1.2 but in this case 1 0 0.8 0 0.8 8. Okay, this is the combination. Understood? Combination. Now, what is the meaning of this point 0.9? Okay, put note and write. I will explain this. Note. Note. See. In this, the limit state of collapse is greater than the limit state of serviceability as per the factor safety concern so the first first point the first point is factor of safety for limit state of collapse is greater than limit state of serviceability limit state of collapse is greater than limit state of serviceability okay why 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 since because safety is more important safety is more important than serviceability safety is more important than serviceability so okay so that's why limit state of collapse is considered as the point of safety okay than the serviceability therefore you have to put more factor safety for safety okay now second point i said you have to consider only either wind load or earthquake load why we are not considering earthquake load and wind load together the reason is the earthquake load and wind load will not happen simultaneously okay that means at a single time wind load and earthquake load which is not acting on a structure either any one of the load is acting at a particular time in general okay so that's the reason we are taking any one of the load for our design okay so the reason is design of wind load or earthquake load or never or never consider or never consider on a base on on any structure simultaneously okay on any structure simultaneously that's the thing design a wind load or earthquake load never consider on any structure simultaneously okay next one is that is both are not happen simultaneously next one is see there is a i said for a dead load either you can use 1.5 or you can use 0 0.9 what is the meaning of 0 0.9 okay the factor factor 0 
is taken is taken with that load when is that load when when that load provide stability against sliding and over tunnel when we consider a structure which is against sliding and over turning on that criteria you have to consider 0.9 as the factor safety for dead load why we are considering 0.9 okay why under that point why why the reason is if a structure if a structure so generally it was in a retaining wall we will consider retaining wall and dams okay if your structure is safe in sliding and overturning and overturning with 90 percentage of weight that means dead load weight then it will be definitely safe with a hundred percentage weight with a hundred percent weight or dead load we can see so that is a meaning if your structure is safe for 90 percentage of dead weight then that structure is safe for 100 percent dead weight also okay so that is an important point the next one is very very important point under the note note number four though, okay the this is very very important point the the total probability total probability of failure of structure under limit state method is 9.75 in the 10 raise to minus 2 so this is the probability okay if you design a structure under the limit state then the probability of failure is 9.75 that means 0 0.0975 right in the 10 raise to minus 2 okay so these are all the important points this is the point directly they will ask the question the value okay now this is the fixed value 9.75 into 10 raised to minus 2 under limit state method the probability of a structure and uh, next one is third chapter or a third one yes important points important points of limit state method Okay, what are the important points or limit state method that we are going to see? So each and every point is important in our examination. Okay, the first one is failure is based on failure is based on this is the examination question. Failure is based on principal strain of principal strain of material that's the first point 
it is based on the principal strain of the material not the principal stress of the material okay and the next one is it is a parabolistic approach okay limit state method is a probabilistic approach probabilistic probabilistic approach this is also important the next one is safety is is checked at ultimate load at ultimate load safety is checked at ultimate load while serviceability while serviceability is checked while serviceability is checked at service or working load so this is important safety is checked ultimate load and the serviceability is checked only for design of working load okay and the next one is limit state method gives smaller section dimension smaller section dimensions while with the more amount of reinforcement with the more amount of reinforcement as compared to as compared to working stress method okay the next one is limit state method is economical than working stress method okay next point is design load design load in limit state method is ultimate load design load is design load in limit state method is ultimate load that means characteristics characteristics load in the partial factor of safety while while characteristics load characteristics load is considered is considered as design load in working stress method that means we are not using any factor safety so just we are using the characteristics load as a design load in the working stress method so this is also an important point and that next one is fourth one that is assumptions assumptions on limit state method here each and every point is important in the assumptions okay now see the first one is the first assumption assumption number one plane section uh, remains plane uh, remains plane before and after bending plain section remains plain before and after bending what is the meaning it means strain diagram strain diagram is linear okay so that means so initially there was a cross section initially this is the cross section 
okay before bending the cross section is the strike okay and after bending the cross section again as strike that is a plane section remains plane before and after bending this is the after bending but this is the before bending the cross section is same it's a strike and the stress sorry strain distribution diagram is linear why the cross section is plane because the strain diagram is strain diagram is linear okay this is the first important assumption and the second assumption is maximum compressive strain compressive strain in concrete is limited to 0.0035 so limited to only 0.0035 we are taking the ultimate compressive strain of concrete is 0.0035 not more than that okay how we are getting this so this is the stress strain curve diagram of concrete we know that okay this is the stress and this is the strain and we know that the stress strain diagram of this concrete is something like that it will come something like that okay and uh, this is the point you will get ultimate stress and corresponding you are having a strain 0 0.002 0 0.002 and somewhere here is 0 0.004 and 0 0.006. So we having seen this in the concrete technology. So you just watch it, that concrete technology video, so that you will get some idea. So the failure strain for all grade of concrete, which is happened between 0 0.004 strain and 0 0.006 strain. But what we are assuming, we are just idealizing this stress strain curve. Up to here is a straight line and we are idealizing this it goes it's a strike okay we are idealizing and we are curtailing this strain up to a value of 0 0.005 this strain is 0 0.0035 this strain is 0 0.0035 we are just considering ultimate strain you can while idealizing you can take the ultimate strain up to infinity but IS-456-2000 scenes, we have to cut in by a strain of 0 0.0035, okay? And corresponding stress is a ultimate stress, that is FCK, okay? Now, this is the FCK. Now, we know that you have to consider the size effect and the loading effect, therefore, this strain diagram stress versus strain diagram you will get up to here it comes is like a straight line then it goes something like that this is point not not three five strain and it's up to straight sorry up to parabola not a straight okay up to parabola parabolic in shape this also non-linear curve okay corresponding to yes to solve what is the value? FCK divided by by considering shape effect and load effect. Okay. Therefore, this is equal to 0 0.67 FCK. How we are getting this? That is FCK divided by 1.5. But for design stress, for considering the design stress, how we can idealize this? We have to idealize this as something like that. Okay. The design stress is it's a parabola.
parabola, then it's a straight. And this value is, after considering the factor of safety, this is equal to 0 0.45 FCK. And this value is 0 0.67 FCK divided by 1.5. After considering the factor safety, you will get this one. This is our now design curve. Okay. So we can write this is the design curve. Design stress versus strain curve. Okay. And this is the this is the characteristics or curve after reducing or after considering after considering after considering what after considering shape and size effect and this one is the first one is the idealized idealized stress versus strain curve this is the idealized curve but this is the the white one is the actual curve the white one is the actual stress versus strain curve so these are the important points okay now next assumption is next assumption is tensile strength Tensile strength of concrete is ignored. Tensile strength of concrete is, we are just ignoring the tensile strength of the concrete. Okay. And the next one is stress versus strain diagram, strain of steel is idealized as follows as per is 456 2000 okay first one is a case a for a mild distance a for mild steel next we can say for HYST bar for HYST bar. This is for a mild steel. Okay, then we are going to see one by one. We know that actual stress strain curve for mild steel is actual stress strain curve for mild steel is this one. Or we can uh, take the next slide for HOST bar. Okay. For my industrial. This is the mild steel, okay. And the stress strain curve for mild steel is just something like that we will get okay and this is the yield stress this is the yield distress we are getting f y and the corresponding strain is zero point one two percentage of strain you will get a yield distress but this one we are idealizing as something like that. This is the actual curve. Actual curve. But the idealized curve is something like that. The idealized curve as per IS 456 is 2000 is 
this one this idealized idealized curve the idealized curve is this one we will take up to the yield stress as a strike then also something like that so this we are this portion this portion can be idealized into into straight line this can be idealized into a straight line this one straight line okay now this we can say is a idealized idealized curve okay this is the idealized curve for a design somewhere here after putting a factor safety this is the fy fy and somewhere here this is equal to after using the factor safety 0 0.87 fy so it is having a factor of safety 1.15 and we can say this is the design curve and this we are getting fy divided by 1.15 okay now what is this one what is the strain the strain that you are getting here is the strain that you are getting here is the slope of this stress strain curve is Young's modulus of steel. We know that this is 2 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per millimeter square. At what strain you are getting this value? Now, this is equal to, we know that the Young's modulus ES, which is equal to opposite side divided by strain, strain in steel in tension. That what 0 0.87 into for a mild steel FI is what 250 divided by divided by adjacent side. Therefore, strain in tension steel is equal to 0 0.00108. So this is the value. Very, very important examination question. So the strain in a mild steel. For our design as per IS 456-2000 is 0 0.00108. So, this is important. This is case A. Next one is case B. For my industry. Sorry, HYST bar. Case B. For HY. For HYST bar. HYST for HYST bar, then how we can do it? For HYST bar, actual curve, actual curve is this one. The stress strain curve. Is something like that. This is the stress and this is the strength. And we will get a graph of something like that. Okay, so this is the stress strain curve, actual stress strain curve. But we have to idealize this as per our design requirement. Okay, as per our design requirement. because this is non-linear in order to find out the yield distress you have to draw a line which is parallel to the initial initial stress strain curve so at the initial stress strain curve initial portion this was straight okay so this was the yield distress is here determined by an offset of strain 0 0.2 percentage 0 0.2 percentage draw a parallel line draw a parallel line okay draw a parallel line and the stress which is touches this line 
touches to the stress strain curve is the yield distress indirectly we are taking it this is the fy also this fy is called it as proof stress so here one important point you need to understand is for mild steel fy is called it as a yield stress for hyst bar hyst bar yield stress is calculated as proof stress okay why this the yield stress we can directly taken directly taken from stress versus strain curve directly taken from the stress versus strain curve because there is a definite yield is there this is the definite yield point okay so we can directly take in the yield stress but for hst bar there is no definite pattern of yield yield point therefore we are finding that yield point by offsetting a strain of 0.2 percentage a line which was drawn parallel to the initial portion of the stress strain curve and where it touches to the actual stress strain curve is the yield stress okay this yield stress is called as proof stress okay why because we are taking indirectly indirectly taken from stress strain curve okay this method is called as offset method okay so this is the actual curve now we are going to see the idealized curve idealized curve as per is 456 2000 so this curve was idealized this curve was idealized is something like that this is the strain this is the stress and the curve which was idealized it's a straight line be careful this is the straight line up to a strain of up to a strain uh, sorry up to a stress of 0 0.8 f5 0 0.8 f5 and the remaining is a curve this is the curve okay then it is straight so we idealized we idealized certain portion as a straight and the remaining portion as a curve then also straight so this is the way we idealized up to 0 0.8 of stress we are idealizing as a straight line okay and the remaining 0 0.2 is idealized as a curve then again it's a straight line okay and this is we are taking as fy this is the fy okay and this is idealized idealized curve idealized curve next one is what is idealized design curve the idealized design curve is also starts from listen carefully i said 0.8 fy is the up to 0.8 fy the stress is considered as a straight for idealized curve but in the actual curve in the actual curve the value was idealized yes 0 0.69 fy okay 0 0.69 fy for that much stress we are considering the stress diagram as a straight okay this is straight and the remaining remaining as a curve remaining as a curve so this is the curve 
non-linear then again it is striped okay then again one minute it is striped this is the actual design curve design idealized curve okay and for design idealist curve what is the stress value stress value is equal to what this one this one is 0 0.87 f 0 0.87 f now see this value i said this one is determined based on the offset method point not two percentage we are getting the yield stress okay so this strain is we are taking as the plastic strain which was drawn parallel to the initial straight line initial portion of the stress tanker and this value is a plastic strain which is we can take it as 0 0.002 0 0.002 strength and this is the Young's modulus that is elastic strength this value which was taken as 0 point stress by Young's modulus that is a strength at this point what is the stress 0 0.87 your point do you know what is Young's modulus yes okay therefore the initial portion up to 0 0.002 is the plastic strain. Plastic strain. And the remaining, this is the elastic strain. Elastic strain. And this total, this total quantity, plastic plus elastic, okay, total strain. I can write total strain which is equal to plastic plus elastic. What is a plastic? 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 FY divided by Young's model substitute. So if we substitute the HOST bar, there are two grades of bar. One is 415, one is 415 grade. One is FE 415 grade. Another one is FE 500 grade. Okay. So for FE 415, for FE 415, FE 415, FE 415, the strain is equal to total strain is equal to E total. I can take it as this is E total, which is equal to 0. Point, if you substitute Young's modulus of steel, we know 2 into 10 raised to 5, and this is F5. Okay, this is the yield stress 415. Substitute this. Then you get 0 0.0, sorry, not not 38. 0 0.0038. This is for FE 450. FE 500. This is 500 is the FY. Total strain is equal to 0 0.0042. So these data are very, very important. Therefore, Summary, summary, total strain is equal to 0 0.00108 as per IS456 for my distil. That means what? FE250. Give total strain is equal to 0 0.0038 is for HYST. That is FE 415 grade. Yield total is equal to 0 
four two. These are the data they will ask you. Okay, for HYST bar FIG five hundred. So these are the important point that you have to keep in your mind. Okay, so that is the important things. Now we having seen the assumptions on limit state method. Now we are going to see analysis of stress block. Next one is fifth one analysis of stress block. Analysis of stress block. We know that the stress strain curve that we taken for a concrete. This is the stress and this is the strain. And the stress block that you are getting is a parabola and a straight line. Up to your strain of for strain is 0 0.0035. This one, the ending portion of this parabolic is 0 0.002. This is the parabola, and this is the straight line. Straight line. Right, and what is this ultimate stress in the design? We are taking is 0 0.45 FCK. 0 0.45 FCK. Okay, so we can say this is 0 0.45 FCK. Okay, now what is the strain? The strain is. Here is 0 0.0035 and the strain varies linearly. So this is the strain block on concrete only. So this is only for concrete. Maximum strain is 0 0.0035. And uh, at a neutral axis, the end of the concrete, the strain is zero. Okay. And this point, your strain is 0 0.002. This is 0 0.0035. Now, if you start to analyze the stress block, which is drawn for a concrete stress block, I'm drawing, okay? Concrete stress block, this is the stress block. This portion is a straight line up to here, then it's a parabolic segment. This is the straight line, okay? Corresponding to your strain now, Corresponding this strain now, this one. We know the strain is varies linearly. Plane section before plane, before and after loading. What is the meaning? The strain diagram is linear. What is the maximum value? 0 0.0035. And corresponding this ending of this straight line portion, we will take this is 0 0.002. What is the stress value? 0 0.4. 5 FCK. Yes or no? The stress value corresponding to the strain of 0.0035. Okay. Now see, we are going to look. The end of this bay by using this uh, relation. So we will take this is the distance of neutral axis XU. And this value. The ending portion of the rectangular segment is 3 by 7 of XU. And the remaining is 4 by 7 of XU. 4 by 7 of XU. And the total compressive force which was acting is C. C is the compressive force which was acting at a distance of centroid right 0 0.42 xu these are the data you have to remember so that is a derivation but in the short note you don't want to study the derivation so the examination this is important you know 
okay and this is c is the compressive force compressive force and c is calculated as 0.36 fck xu into b this is the area of the stress block this portion is the area of stress block area of stress block so this is the area of the stress block and this area of the stress block which is distributed throughout the width of the segment therefore b this is the total compressive force you are getting okay now stress versus strain that is total stress block of a section stress block of a section which can be Suppose there was a beam. This is the cross section. It's a cross section of beam. Somewhere here, we are having a reinforcement. This is the A strip. And somewhere here, there was a neutral axis, which is passes. So above the neutral axis, the force only taken by the concrete. Below the neutral axis, the force is taken by steel. So this is the straight line. It goes something like that. Then what is a strain? OK, first of all, we have to draw the strain distribution diagram. This is the breadth of the section from top to the center portion of the reinforcement we are taking is the D. Okay. Now the strain diagram is this one. This is the strain diagram. Strain diagram is this one is a strain diagram. Okay. What is the maximum strain? Zero point not not three five. What is the maximum strain on steel? In the assumption we having seen maximum strain in ten cents steel. Steel. One minute. Maximum strain in tension steel have you written this one is okay. Okay, yeah. This one. This is the maximum strain in steel. Assumption. Okay. I have to write I have to write here the maximum tensile strain is equal to greater than or is equal to 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 fy divided by es okay now we can write the strain is 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 fy divided by young's modulus this is the strain in concrete this is strain in steel now what is stress block the stress block is something like that. Below the neutral axis, only the steel takes the load. Above the neutral axis, concrete takes the load. So somewhere here, the strain of 0 0.002. Therefore, this is the point. Up to here is a straight line. Then it's a parabola. Then it's a parabola what is this 0 0.45 fck okay this is stress block we know that from here to here this distance is 3 by 7 of xu okay that means this distance is the neutral axis xu distance of neutral axis 
and this balance is d minus x u d minus x u okay and the remaining the parabolic segment depth is 4 by 7 of x u and the total compressive force which was acting c at a distance of 0 0.4 2xu and the c is equal to how much 0 0.36 fck xu into b this is the area of stress block into b means the breadth the total breadth and from this point to the distance between the two forces that is lever on lever on which is equal to D minus 0 0.42 xu. So these are the some of the important that is thing and the <coughs> stress strain curve. Okay, under the cross section. This is the cross section. How the stress is varying, how the strain is varying. Okay, these are all says IS 456-2000. Understood? Okay. Here main difference between the working stress method working stress method and the limit state method let me tell you in the working stress method stress controlled approach stress controlled approach but the limit state method is strain controlled approach strain controlled approach okay strain controlled approach what is the meaning the stress we 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 controlled our stress sigma cb ec which is equal to sigma cbc we taken as maximum okay for example for m20 concrete we maximized for m20 concrete what is sigma cbc we taken is maximum seven for fe 415 steel we taken as sigma st we taken as sigma st which is equal to 230 this is the maximum more than that we are not allowing that's why we got the stress of steel and concrete you will get something like that linear curve Okay, linear curve that we got in the working stress method. You can check it. This is the steel stress diagram. Okay, this is stress strain diagram. Only linear because we controlled only stress. We curtailed the stress. We are not taking care of the strain. But in this approach, we controlled only the strain. We controlled the strain for concrete only 0 0.0035 and steel we controlled not less than 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 fy they are the years we controlled the strain and also we know that the strain diagram is varying okay linearly varying the strain diagram not a stress diagram so the strain diagram is varying this is the strain diagram okay this is the strain diagram this is the stress diagram in working stress we we limited our stress in the working stress method but we limited our strain in the limit state method we are not doing anything with it the stress block okay so that is the important uh, difference so in the limit state method the entire analysis that we are going to do is based on the strain approach but in the working stress method we have done the entire analysis based on the limited stress diagram now in both method here the working stress method the stress is linear but the limit state method the strain diagram is linear now we are going to see the final thing that is that analysis okay limit state method analysis that the sixth one limit state method analysis 
okay sixth one limit state method analysis so the analysis is same as the working stress method so those who are not studied in the working stress method those who are not watched the video of working stress method please go go through the working stress method video then you have to come to this lecture series that is limit state method analysis both are similar in nature and every concept is similar and small changes will be there that i will explain here so before watching this video you have to watch the working stress method of analysis so that you will get a clarity okay now we can start the analysis so we can bifurcate three part So let me some more bifurcation. Okay. Okay. So we can first one. I'm going to start from the balance section. Okay. Because everything is taken from the balanced. Balance as a neutral. Okay. So balanced section, balanced section first one. Then we will see under reinforced, under reinforced section. Then we will see over reinforced section, over reinforced section under reinforced section and war reinforced section so we are going to see one by one okay this one is under under reinforced section first we are going to see balance section so what are the important points that we are going to see in the balance section so which was same as in the uh, working stress method okay so first of all we have to draw a stress and strain distribution diagram okay so let us take a section And the same size we will take for the entire segment, balance segment, as well as for and for segment. Okay. And somewhere here, there was a steel. There was a steel. Okay, and this is the center point that is a neutral axis. Okay, for a balance section, the neutral axis goes somewhere here. Let us consider this is the balance section neutral axis. Okay, for comparison, I'm drawing these things. Okay, now here also, first of all, take a section. cross section okay
this is the steep a similar manner here also you can take the stress versus strain diagram for that draw the section okay steep okay now for a balance section what is the stress sorry strain diagram the strain diagram for balance section is in this the strain in steel as well as strain in concrete both are attains the maximum value simultaneously okay both are attains the maximum strain value simultaneously so that means that means this is the balance section the strain diagram balance section strain diagram okay balance section strain diagram this is the balance section strain diagram what is the balance section strain diagram 0 0.0035 what is this one this one is 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 fy divided by e s this is the balance strain diagram sigma st here the strain in concrete and the strain in steel both are happening simultaneously both are achieve the maximum limit simultaneously now what is the stress block the stress block of this is something like that okay this is the stress block this is the stress in steel okay the total force is t and this is the stress block okay this is the parabolic segment and this one is compressive force c and the distance between the c and the t we can take it as lever arm l a l a now see we know that from this point to this portion we can say this is the balance therefore x u limited then balance is what remaining d minus d minus x u limited okay and what is this distance the force compressive force acting at a distance of 0 0.42 x u limited and the end of the rectangular portion you know 3 by 7 4 by 7 okay so i hope you understood now we can write a point under the balance section under balance section here strain of steel and concrete attains its maximum value simultaneously it attains its maximum value simultaneously okay now from strain diagram from strain diagram from strain diagram use similar triangle principle use similar triangle principle you will get x u limiter x u limiter In the working stress method we having seen this is a x c but here this is the x u limiter is 700 divided by 
one one double zero plus zero point eight seven f y into d okay and we can write this x u limiter which is equal to k into d now what is k k is equal to 700 divided by 1100 plus 0 0.87 f5 okay so from that we can write x u limited is dependent on is dependent on steel grade only steel grade only not it is only steel grade not a concrete grade not a concrete grade okay now this is the important point for different grades of steel and your k and x u we can write for grades of steel grades then k then x u limiter grades k x u limiter what is this 250 4 15 500 so this is k is what zero point if you substitute 250 in this equation then we will get 0 0.53 this is 0 0.48 k value this is 0 0.46 so we can write 0 0.53 d now x limiter 0 0.48 d since x limited is equal to k into d so this is 0 0.46 d so very very important and the next one is limited pt calculation next one is limited pt calculation what is the limited pt for a balance section the limited pt which is calculated by tension which is equal to compression force what is the tension force 0 0.87 is the stress f y in the ast what is compressive force 0 0.36 fck b x u is a limiter x u is a limiter now we can write 0 0.36 f c k b x u limited is what k into d we can write k into d right therefore we can write this is 0 0.87 f y a s t now what is a s t a s t divided by b d this b and d comes here then 0 0.36 divided by 0 0.87 into fck divided by fy into k so this is the final value okay we know that pt is equal to what ast divided by b into d into 100 so we can write this ast by b d is is equal to we can write pt percentage of reinforcement divided by 100 is equal to ast divided by b d so substitute this here that for pt divided by 100 which is equal to 0 0.36 divided by 0.87 into fck divided by fy into k okay into k so this is the important thing now we can say 0 0.36 divided by 0 0.87 is equal to 41 point something so is equal to 0 0.4137 so i can write it this is 0 0.414 414 fck divided by fy into k into 100 is equal to pt therefore pt is equal to pt is limited right this is the limiter pt is equal to if you solve it 41.4 k fck 
by F5. So the percentage of reinforcement, limited percentage of reinforcement is based on grade of concrete and grade of steel. Okay. So this you have to keep in your mind for your examination perspective. This is important. Understood? Next one is limited PT calculation is over. Okay. For example, for example, one minute, let me bifurcate this. Okay, one more thing I wanted to do. Yeah. Okay, we can see now this PT. We can write, for example, for example, M20 concrete and FE 415 steel. If you take M20 concrete, FE 415 steel, then what is FCK? Is 20. What is FY? 415. We got it. Therefore, in that, what is a PT? If you substitute, 41.4 in the grade of concrete is 20. FY415. What is the FY415? K value 0 0.48. What is the FY415? FY415 is 415. This is the PT that you are getting. So PT limited for this M20 concrete. And FE 415 gets PT limited, which is equal to 0 0.955 percentage. Okay, so this much that you are getting. Okay, after substituting, you are getting this much. Now, from that, what do you understand? The same thing which we have done in the working stress also. Okay, so we can write note, note not PT limited in a working stress method for same grade of concrete M20 and FE 415 steel is less than PT limited in the limit state method. So this is approximately we will get 0.43 percentage, but here this 0 0.955 percentage. Okay. This part we have written okay somewhere here one minute. Let me go through that slide. I I said under the important point in the image state method gives smaller section size but more amount of reinforcement. In the limit state method, more amount of reinforcement compared to the working stress. So this also I will explain what is the meaning of smaller section dimension. Okay, you have to keep this in your mind. Okay. In the limb state method, it gives more reinforcement than the working stress method. Okay, so that is an important point. You can write limit state method request more steel than working stress method. Okay, but limit state method. Uh, request smaller size than working stress method. Okay. Now, next we can move further. That is this moment of resistance, critical moment of resistance that we are going to see now in the balance section. 
we will get a critical moment of resistance critical moment of resistance critical moment of resistance so you have to take from tension side from sorry from compression side let us take from compression side from compression side if you take moment of resistance then force into lever arm that is c into lever arm what is c 0 0.36 fck b xu limited d minus 0 0.42 xu limited and we know that xu limited is equal to k into d fck b into what is x u limited k d d minus 0 0.42 k d okay since x u limited is equal to k d so 0 0.36 fck b k d square 1 minus 0 0.42 k this is the moment of uh, resistance now we can Sim further simplify this 0 0.36 fck k j b d square so we can write this is a q b d square this is a moment of resistance now moment of resistance from this you are getting is this much i hope you understood okay so this is the thing, moment of resistance. Now we can see what we can do, where Q is equal to moment of resistance factor. Resistance factor, how much is this? 0 0.36 FCK KJ. What is k you know j is what 1 minus 0 0.42 k and k is what neutral axis depth factor okay neutral axis depth factor now let us uh, explain what is the interpretation of this see the interpretation of this is For example, for example, for example, let us take first is image state method. Let me come back. Okay. Limit state method, working stress method. Limit state method, working stress method. For example, for example, limit state method, key stress method. In the limit state method, let us take M20 concrete and FE415 steel. Okay, then in the limit state, what is FCK? 20. What is FE? Sorry, FY? 450. Right? And FY? 415. 415. But in the working stress method, we having seen this is sigma CBC. Concrete stress is 7. And sigma ST is a steel stress 230 after using the factor of safety. Now, what is F, uh, what is K for limb state method FE 415 steel 0 0.48, 0 0.48. But here K is equal to what? We know that 280 divided by 280 plus 3 sigma ST. 
3 sigma st. So, sigma st is, you know, then k is equal to after substituting 0 0.288. So, this is the value for k. This is the value for k in a working stress. What is a j? j is equal to 1 minus k divided by 3. We having seen this. And if you substitute, then you will get 0 0.9037. Here, what is a k? j, sorry. 1 minus 0 0.42. So after substituting here, so you will get 0 0.7984. See the difference. Then what is a Q? We know the Q is equal to 0 0.36 FCK. FCK KJ. So if you substitute everything, then you will get 2.76 Q. Now, what is moment of resistance? Q B D square. Now, moment of resistance divided by what is a Q? 2.76 into breadth square root, which is equal to D. Understood? So, D is equal to this is the value. At the same time, here Q is equal to, here Q is equal to, if you substitute 1 by 2, sigma c b c k j okay so everything you know now after substituting you will get 0 0.911 q this one this then moment of resistance and working stress method q b d square same q b d square now, moment of resistance divided by 0 0.911B square root, which is equal to D. Now, compare the depth. So, depth of limit state. So, which was lesser than the depth of the working stress method. That's why in the assumption that is important points I have written. So, from that we understood the depth is the limit state. Okay. So from that, D in the limit state is less than, see this, 1 by 2.76. Any of this value is lesser than this one. D in the working stress method. So this is the conclusion. So there are two things we have seen. One is the percentage of steel of limit state and working stress method. Then the critical, sorry, that's a depth of working stress method and limit state method for example we are having seen and the next one is that we are going to see if we take moment of resistance from the tension zone if we calculate moment of resistance from the tension zone from the tension zone if we calculate second one is one minute limited this is from compression zone right this is from compression zone this is a capital a similarly B. if you take from moment from tension from tension zone if you take moment from tension zone, what is the moment of resistance? Take moment from tension zone. This force is equal to tension, force equal to 0 0.87 F5, AST. Then D minus 0 0.42 XU limited. So which is equal to 0 0.87 F5 AST. D minus 0 0.42 k into d that we know 0 0.87 fy ast into d 1 minus 0 0.42 k this is the moment of resistance now we can write 0 0.87 fy so ast okay ast into dj okay so this is a dj now we can do 
moment of operation is equal to MR divided by 0.87 FY D into J D into J which is equal to AST which is equal to AST. Now AST we can write it as this we can write this AST we can write PT in the BD divided by 100 in the moment of uh, resistance divided by 0 0.87 FY D into Z. So this is the final formula. Okay, 0 0.87 FY AST, this is the lever arm, this is the force in the lever arm. Then if you simplify this, then you will get something like that. So final value is this one. I hope you understood. Then if you want, you can further simplify this. PT is equal to moment of uh, resistance divided by BD into 1 divided by 0 0.87 FY DJ. Okay, into 100. So this is the final value. This also PT limiter. You can take it as this is one PT limiter. Another one PT limiter also we have it. So, so this is the thing. This is all about the analysis of balance section. So now we are going to see, for example, over reinforced section. So what is the meaning of over reinforced section? In the over reinforced section, we can write the strain in concrete is less than the strain in, we can write the first point. Strain in concrete is less than the limited strain in steel sorry limit of strain in concrete actual strain in concrete okay actual strain in concrete that means i can write strain in concrete does less than 0 0.00 no strain in concrete you know over reinforced section right this is wrong strain in concrete this is wrong sorry the limit of strain it will attain but strain in steel is less here i can write strain in steel that is strain in steel sigma sd dash is less than less than limited value what is the limited value 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 fy divided by young's modulus but Strain in concrete, it attains the full value. Strain in concrete, that is strain in concrete, which is equal to 0 0.0035. It attains the full value. But strain in steel will not attain the full value because in the war reinforced section, the number of reinforcement here is more. Okay, therefore, first of all, you have to draw the strain diagram in the balance section. Okay, so here this is the area of this compressive zone. Okay, that also I need to mark. This is the area of the compressive zone. Okay, now strain in strain diagram. First of all, we have to draw the strain diagram of balance section. Then only we can make sense. This is the strain diagram of balance section. strain diagram of balance section is this now actual strain diagram of this is we can take it as we can take it as the strain in concrete is more but the strain in steel is 
is not attains its full value, the value is lesser than the actual value. Therefore, the strain in concrete attains the maximum value, but the strain in steel attains only this much. So this strain is, we can mark it as strain in steel dust. Strain in steel dust. So what is strain in steel dust? Uh, sigma ST dust less than limited 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 FY divided by Young's modulus. So this value is lesser than actual value. Actual strain. Actual strain is what? This much. Limited strain. Strain in steel. What is this? But the concrete attains the maximum value of 0 0.005. Now, so initially this is the neutral axis, but the finally the neutral axis shifts down where the neutral axis shifts somewhere here. This is the neutral axis now. The neutral axis shifts down. The neutral axis shifts down. That is the neutral axis comes down. And this is the area of compressive zone. In the first case, the area of compressive zone is in the balance section is this one. Now the area of compressive zone is more. And this is the neutral axis depth. This is the critical neutral axis, XU limited. XU limited. But this is the XU actual. This is the XU actual. That is, XU actual is simply XU. And this one, the stress block is for this case, the stress block is this one. This is the tensile force. This is got a point eight seven. FY AST. Now the stress block is something like that. It's a parabola there. And this is C. That is the thing. This is C. And from this point to this point, the force between these two is a lever arm. This is the lever arm. Lever arm. Okay. We can say this is a lever arm. And the compression force acting at a distance of 0 0.42 XU. But this is 0 0.42 XU limiter because no neutral axis depth is XU limiter. Understood? So now we are going to write one by one the point. We can write first point is what we can write in the war info section. We can write concrete fails first. Because the concrete is attains of maximum stress initially. So the first point we can write concrete fails first. Concrete fails first. Why? Because the concrete is attains the maximum stress. Now steel attains still having a stress of FST less than 0.87 FY. Why? Because strain is less than the actual strain. Therefore, the actual stress is, actually, I should write this is not 0.87 FY. That's a mistake, sorry. This strain is actually FST. FST in the AST. And this FST is less than actual 0 0.8 FY under the balanced case. Under the balanced case, this T I have to write here. This T is equal to 0 0.87 balanced case. Okay. Okay. But here only FST, which is less than this balanced FST. Why? The balanced FST, the strain is this much. 
in the war reinforce the strain is which is less than the limited strain so okay we know the stress is directly proportional to strain okay whatever strain you are having corresponding the stress will be increased okay now so therefore this is the point which is less now fst is less what is xu actual neutral axis greater than xu limited okay then it is known to be war reinforced section is known to be known to be brittle failure why because the concrete is failing brittle brittle failure understand now area of compress compressive zone compressive zone is greater than area of compressive zone of balanced section as compared to the balanced section as compared to balanced section area of compressive zone the war reinforced compressive zone is more okay now we can say neutral axis shifts downward neutral axis shifts downward so this is the balance section neutral axis but here the neutral axis shifts downward for war reinforced section okay that's why x is greater than x limiter the next point is so we having seen up to here the lever arm lever arm of lever arm of balanced section balanced is greater than lever arm of over a reinforced section okay lever arm of over reinforced section what is a lever arm of balanced section d minus xu limited which is greater than d minus 0.42 xu actual xu okay so that because of this moment moment of lever arm moment of resistance of over reinforced which is greater than which is greater than moment of resistance of balanced section okay now ast in the war reinforced section percentage of ast ast divided by bd that is i can write pt for war reinforced section greater than pt limited that is a balanced section so what is pt ast divided by bd into 100 into sorry greater than pt limited okay pt limited pt limited okay the next point is actual critical neutral axis you have already calculated okay actual neutral axis is xu which was calculated by using this concept eq compressive force equal to tensile force but in the working stress method, the action neutral axis is calculated by using moment, take moment of the area about the neutral axis. Here the force based on the force 0 First, but in the neutral axis calculation, we have to take 0.87 FL. Okay, but actually, this is what this value is less than FST. 
but in the calculation actual interest calculation we have to take this one uh, i have to i don't want to confuse you people uh, just to put it fst in the ast fst in the ast okay what is fst which is less than 0 0.87 f then how to calculate this uh, FST? Okay, the calculation of this FST is by using similar triangle principle. Okay, this FST calculator corresponding strain in steel what is strain in steel epsilon st dust okay and a rougher page number 7d of is 456 from that you will get okay now how can you calculate sigma st that is uh, epsilon st by using similar triangle principle what is similar triangle principle you know that see the diagram excuse me listen for for x u your value is 0 0.0035 for d minus x u sigma st right so for x u what is the strain 0 0.0035 for d minus x u what is the value actual strength so from that you will get a strength then refer page number 70 of is 456 corresponding this strength you will get a stress substitute this stress then you will get answer so this is the way you have to do okay now so we having seen this now we are going to see moment of resistance calculation moment of uh, resistance calculation the first one is this is the war reinforced section right in the war reinforced section what we can say actually the strain is it attains a point not not three five it will be more than point not not three five yes if we increase the load further that the strain on concrete is more than point not not three five and the strain in steel slightly increases then to the next point so it will be happen but what IS-456 says, that is important. So let me write, so listen carefully. In case of over uh, reinforced, in case of over reinforced section, section, the strain, developed strain developed in tension steel is less than the permissible permissible value what is a permissible value actual strength permissive value which does not which does not obey the code specification which does not obey the code and specification as per page number 69 okay in the war info section what code says the code says the steel at least strength developed strain developed in tension steel shall not be less than shall not be less than 0 
plus 0 0.87 F5. The code says, the strain developed in the seed should not be less than this. But in the over reinforced section, it is less than this. Therefore, it is against the code. So 0 0.87 F5 and hence over a reinforced section is not preferred is not is not preferred in limit state method in such a case in such a case the ultimate moment of resistance of over uh, reinforced ultimate moment of resistance of over reinforced section shall be section shall be taken which is equal to taken equal to mr limiter you have to take mr limiter so code says okay therefore mr limiter which is same as where in the balance section what is that 0 0.36 fck okay x u limiter into b into d minus 0 0.42 x u limiter so this is the value after solving this is qb d square we having seen this right mr what is a q 0 0.36 fck k j right so this things you know understood so this is the moment of resistance calculation but if you take from tension zone if you take this is from compression zone from compression side from compression side if you take moment from compression side see compression side means what this force into this much distance up to t then from tension from tension side if you take from tension side then what is moment of rations mr is equal to t into leave around so we know that here t is equal to what fst and ast and leave around d minus 0 0.42 in the xu actual x t so this f t is what less than 0 0.87 f y so this FST is calculated similar to this one. So I have said, right, FST is calculated based on this. Use page number 70 of IS 456. Calculate sigma ST dash by use similar triangle principle to calculate FST. And plug that FST here, you will get answer. Understood? OK. Next, we are going to see war reinforced section. Sorry, under reinforced section. OK. Under info section, how it is under info section. In under info section, we can write what is the first point? Here, strain in steel is this one, but here, strain in steel is greater than or is equal to 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 FY divided by years than the limiter okay now strain in concrete what is strain in concrete so here the steel is yield first but the strain in concrete strain in concrete what is strain in concrete is less than 0 0.0035 so, okay in the balance section and over reinforced section, the area of steel is somewhat more 
but in the area of steel in the under reinforced section is less than the balance section therefore therefore how the strain is changing listen so let me explain this is the balance section strain distribution diagram okay this is the balance section strain distribution diagram but here steel attains the maximum that is sigma st this one the strain for this case is sigma st which is maybe greater than or is equal to 0 0.002 plus 0 0.87 fy divided by es the limited is 0 point this only but if you increase the load further, then the strain, steel is a ductile material, therefore strain will be more than this limited value, maybe. But you know, in the concrete, the strain, actual strain is 0 0.0035, but the limiter, but actually develop is only this much, very less value only develop. Therefore, your strain only somewhere here. Okay, so therefore, This is the actual stress distribution diagram. But it is steel develops the maximum, but the concrete is not developing its maximum value. So, what is this? Strain in concrete dash, which is equal to 0 0.003. So, concrete attains a strain which is less than limited. Okay, this is the point. Now, from this diagram, the neutral axis is what shifts upward. From this diagram, the neutral axis shifts upward. This is the neutral axis. The neutral axis shifts upward. This is the neutral axis. This is the neutral axis. Neutral axis shifts upward. So we can say this is x u limited. X U limited, and this is your X U actual X U. This is your actual X U. Okay, then what is the stress block? The stress block that we are getting is this one. This is T. Now this T is equal to what? Here strain is more than maybe more than the limiter therefore the stress is the stress which is developed is equal to 0 0.87 it will attain the design value okay 0 0.87 f4 into ast which is equal to the balance section but in the over reinforced section because the strain is less therefore stress which is acting on uh, the over reinforced section steel is less okay um, be careful this is 0.87 f5 it is attains because strain also limited, stress also limited. And uh, this is the stress block. This is the stress block. And uh, somewhere here, the force which is acting C. And uh, this is the lever arm. What is the lever arm? This is the lever arm. Lever arm is equal to, we know that d minus the total is depth d okay the total depth is you know d okay i forget to mark it but anyhow let me mark here this is the total depth d effective depth not a total depth d. and we know that what is this much yes 0 0.42 xu actually xu this is the x u. Then lever arm is equal to you know that. What is a lever arm? D minus 0 0.42 x u. So these, these are the important points. Okay, here's in neutral axis shifts upward. But here the neutral axis shifts downward. These are the points. They will ask you the examination. Your neutral axis move upward. 
okay now we are going to write okay next one is here steel yields first and fails first and steel fails and steel fails okay now here the stress in steel stress in steel here less than 0 0.87 but here more than r is equal to 0 0.87 fy now what is x u x u is less than x u limited and this failure is what it is known to be it is known to be ductile it is known to be a ductile failure now here area of compression zone compression zone is what less than see area of compression less than the area of balance section that is area of compressive zone of balanced section balanced section now next point you can say neutral axis what happened ships these are the question ships upward ships upward the next point what is that lever arm lever arm lever arm intact or reinforced section is less but here lever arm is greater than that is under reinforced in the balanced is less than lever arm of under reinforced so the reverse of this one okay in the over reinforced section lever arm is less but in the under reinforced lever arm is this one what is the meaning d minus 0.42 xu limited this one d minus 0.42 actually xu now because of this moment of uh, resistance of under reinforced you are under reinforced is less than moment of uh, resistance of balanced now pt for under reinforced anyhow you know less than pt for limited okay so what is the meaning ast divided by b into d into 100 which was greater than pt limited okay now actual neutralized calculation actual neutralized calculation that is x u the same formula which was used in the four and four c is equal to t what is c 0.36 fck b into xu which is equal to here 0 0.87 fy yes so from that you will get xu okay now moment of resistance calculation moment of resistance calculation let us take from tension side that is easy okay from tension side if you take moment of resistance from tension side then moment of resistance is equal to t into lever arm what is a t 0.87 fy 
AST D minus 0.42 XU. So everything you know, simply substitute, you will get an answer. Okay, that means from tension zone, if you take, you have to take point force into distance. Okay, leave around. Force into up to the compressive zone. Therefore, point is on your AST is a tension in the lever arm. So you will get an answer. Okay. The next one is if you take from compressive zone. Compressive zone. So if you take from compressive zone, then what is the moment of resistance? Moment of resistance is equal to compressive force into lever arm. What is the compressive force? So here, point three six FCK B XU into D minus zero point four two XU. Yeah, the problem is the stress is actually this is not a zero point four three six FCK. Why? Actually, this is not correct. Why? The strain is less. Therefore, this I can write it as some constant. Some constant, let us take uh, x, y, z. Let us take z into fck b into x u into d minus 0.42 x u. So what is this? This z fck is a stress in concrete, which is less than 0.36. FCK. Yes or no? Why? Yes, strain is less. The strain in concrete is less. Strain in concrete is less. Actually, if your strain is up to 0 0.3, not not 35, then only the this value, the concrete compressive value is equal to 0 0.36. But here the strain is only this much, and the area of stress block is this one. Therefore, therefore, this. Uh, the area of stress block is less than this one. That's the balance section. Therefore, I have taken as E set. This is the E set. And how can you calculate this E set? That is a trial and error process, which was same as this one, page number 16, and do it process. But you know, you don't want to do these things. Anyhow, we need a moment of rations, right? You can use this formula. That is enough. Why you are why we need to go further? The trial and error process. No, we don't want to do that. Therefore, use this formula for moment of rotation calculation for under reinforced. In the over reinforced section, you have to use only this process, this one to calculate moment of rotation. If you use this one, then again it was tedious. You need to refer IS 456-2000. That's somewhat tedious. Why we are we need to go this? Why we need to take a risk? Simply have to use this one. But anyhow. We know that we will not design a section for a over reinforce, only under reinforce. So I hope you understood this one. Okay. So this is all about the limb state method. Okay. Thank you. We will see in the uh, next class uh, some more interesting topic under RCC. Okay. Thank you.